healthy in this video will show you how to use Gauss elimination to solve an electrical engineering problem. We have a circuit diagram on the left. In the circuit diagram, we have two power sources. The one on the left is 8 volts. The one on the right is 9 volts. We also have a number of resistors. So the resistor on top here is 20 ohms. The one on the right is 10 ohms. The one in the middle is also 10 ohms. And the one down the bottom is 15 ohms. The circuit has two parts and three currents. The first current is here. Let's call this is I1. The second current is here. Let's call I2. And the third current is here. Let's call I3. The question is, what are the values of I1, I2, and I3? First, we'll introduce the Kirchhoff's laws. What the Kirchhoff's current law states is the current inflow will equal to the current outflow at any point. We have two nodes in the circuit. So the one down here, let's call that P. And the one up here, let's call that Q. For node P, I1 is going into the point. So let's put it on the left hand side of this equation. For I2, it's going away from the point P. So let's write it on the right hand side of the equation. For I3, it's also going into the point P. So let's write it on the left hand side. To slightly rearrange this equation in the 1 to 3 order, we can write down I1 minus I2 plus I3 is equal to 0. How about point Q? So this is for point P. For point Q, we have I2 that flows into point 2. But I1 and I3 that are flowing away from point Q. If we move I2 to the right hand side of this equation, we'll have 0 equals to I1 minus I2 plus I3. These two equations are essentially the same. So this is about the current. Then how about voltage? In Kirchhoff's voltage law, it states that in any closed loop, the sum of voltage jobs equals to the voltage of the power source. So let's look at the loop on the left. There are two resistors and the two currents. So 20 times I1 is the first part, plus 10 times I2 should be equal to 8 volts on the left. So this is the left loop. Then for the right loop, we have three resistors. We have 10 times I2 plus 10 times I3 plus 15 times I3. And the total is 9 volts. We can put the second and the third terms together. So we'll have 10 times I2 plus 25 times I3 equals to 9 volts. Now we have three variables, I1, I2, and I3. We have three equations as well. So that's 1, 2, 3. Let's write these three equations together. If I1, I2, or I3 is not present in any one of these equations, we'll put a zero in front of it. So for the first equation, that's I1 minus I2 plus I3 equals to zero. For the second equation, that's 20I1 plus 10I2. There's no I3, so that's plus zero I3. That equals to eight. For the third equation, there's no I1, so that's zero I1 plus 10I2 plus 25I3 equals to nine. We can drop off the 
I1, I2, and I3, and write that into a matrix form. Or use dash line to divide the left-hand side and the right-hand side of these equations. Starting from here, we can use the Gauss elimination method to calculate I1, I2, and I3. In the first step, we want to remove I1 from row 2. So this is row 2. What we can do is to use row 2 minus 20 times row 1. Row 2 is 20, 10, 0, and 8. Then 20 times row 1 is 20, minus 20, 20, and 0. This gives us term minus negative 20 is 30, 0 minus 20 is minus 20, then 8 minus 0 is 8. So the new matrix we have is 1 minus 1, 1, 0, then 0, 30, minus 20, 8. The third row stays the same, so it's 0, 10, 25, and 9. The next step is to remove I1 from row 3 in the new matrix. And this is row 3 of the new matrix. Luckily, we don't have to do that. It's because it's already 0. So we can move to step 3. We need to remove I2 from row 3. Again, to do that, we can use 3 times I3 minus I2. 3 times I3 gives us 0, 30, 75, and 27 minus I2, that's 0, 30, minus 20, and 8. What we have is 0, 0. 75 minus minus 20 is 95, and 28 minus 8 is 19. With this information, we can construct the new matrix. So the first two rows stays the same as the previous one. The last row will be 0, 0, 95, 19. What the last row tells us is 95 times I3 is equal to 19. So I3 is equal to 19 over 95, which equals to 0.2. Now we can substitute I3 into the second row here. So what we have is 0 I1, that's 0, plus 30 times I2, minus 20 times 0.2, that's I3, which equals to 8. If you do the calculation, I2 is equal to 0.4, and we can substitute I3 and I2 into the first equation here. So I1 minus I2, which is 0.4, plus I3, that's 0.2, is equal to 0. And this tells us I1 is equal to 0.2 as well. Something worth noting is not all combinations of linear equations will give you unique set of answers. In some of the cases, you can get more than one solution. In other cases, you don't get any solution. In the next video, we'll give you one example to show that with some combinations of linear equations, you will get zero solutions.